Welcome. Welcome, my friends, to this holy day, to this time set apart, a time to remember the promises of God, to offer thanks, to, to sing and pray and celebrate the triumph of life and love over death and deception. As we enter into this time of worship, I invite you to think of a moment when someone that you least expected to see suddenly stood before you. A moment when something you had lost is found again and you can scarcely believe your eyes. Think of a moment when your fear was suddenly proved unfounded and you were surprised by joy. The resurrection of Jesus brings us to such a moment. We resign ourselves to the worst and suddenly life turns around. So come to this Easter morning to be shaken from your conviction that nothing can change your situation. Come if you look at the world and feel overwhelmed by its chaos or disillusioned by its broken promises. On this morning, we remember how Mary went to anoint a corpse and was greeted by a savior. Come and join in worship, prepared to see your life and the world through new eyes. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Christ the Lord is risen today. Voices United 157.
Let us pray. Loving God, you who lifted the gloom and despair of the disciples with the good news of Christ's resurrection, you who transformed the most dreadful end into the most beautiful beginning, we thank you for your promise of renewal and your generous invitation of eternal life for all. Gracious God, surprise us this day. Help us to live in the gladness and grace and the newness of Easter. When our faith is short of understanding, though the truth is there to see, forgive us. When our faith is challenged by that which scares us, Remind us of the power of the resurrection. When we are overwhelmed, bring to mind the cry of Mary, I have seen the Lord, and grant us, O God, the faith to believe. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Christ is alive. Voices united. 158. First reading from the scripture for today is taken from Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. Hi, my name is Ella and I'm from The Hub. I'm just here to do some readings for you today. So the first one is Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2. And it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, 
Our second scripture reading is taken from John 20, verses 1 to 18. Hi, I'm Ella. I'm from The Hub. I'm just here to do some readings for you today. So this one is Psalm 118, verses 14 to 24. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I will live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God still speaks. Thanks be to God. Come, come with shouting, come, come with singing, come, children of Jerusalem. Come, come with shouting, come, come rejoicing, come ye children of Jerusalem. Children rejoice and shout, sing out to God, lift up your praise to the Lord. Praise the Lord, children rejoice and shout, clap your hands, come ye children of Jerusalem. Let us pray. We gather, O oh God, as your people, hoping to hear a word from you that will help us to live as your disciples in a world where so much needs to be done, in a world where so much need to find hope. Help us, O oh God, to receive that from your word today as we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, if you have a dark sense of humor, it would be the perfect April Fool's joke, the perfect prank. Now, imagine that you are at what is supposed to be the viewing for a close friend who has died. You step forward to view the body and pay your last respects. But you are dumbfounded when you look at the casket. 
You can see the clothes and the shoes and the spectacles all there laid out as if someone were actually wearing them. But there is no body. As you gaze in bewilderment, you feel a tap on your shoulder. You turn around, and there is a person, the presumed deceased, standing behind you. I'm sure for some of us, they would have had to call the paramedic to revive us. It would be the perfect prank. That is, if you have a dark sense of humor. Jesus was dead. And Mary knew that to be a fact. She was there. She had witnessed it. She was there when they took his lifeless body down from the cross, wrapped it in burial cloth, placed it in a tomb, and sealed it. She was there. Now she was there at the tomb early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. And what she saw left her dumbfounded. The tomb was empty, and she did not know what to make of it. She ran, maybe out of fear, and told Peter and another one of, this, of the disciples. They went to the tomb and saw that it was indeed empty. And they too did not know what to make of it. So they returned home dumbfounded. But Mary could not let it go. She stood weeping outside the tomb. She was left to grieve alone. Yet she is not alone, but accompanied by angels. Though she seems to take no comfort in their presence, apparently not recognizing them as angels. And they ask her why she is weeping. After answering them, she turns and sees a person standing there whom she presumes is the gardener. And she said to him, Sir, if you have moved the body of my Lord, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Now I can imagine Mary saying, If this is some sort of prank, let me know where he is, because it is not funny. But my friends, it was not a prank. And the person she was speaking to wasn't the gardener, as she presumed. It was actually Jesus, her Lord, standing there face to face. Now that's an incredible moment. Mary knew Jesus very well. She had face-to-face -face encounters with him that were deeply moving and life-transforming. Hence her devotion to him in life and her grief over him in death. Yet there he was, standing before her, and she did not recognize him. Now we may wonder, how could that be? The answer probably lies in the fact that it was still dark. Remember John says that Mary went to the tomb early on the first day of the week 
while it was still dark. And maybe that, coupled with the fact that intense grief can make it extremely difficult to see past the moment and event of death. And often everything before you seems to be just a blur. So Mary's failure to recognize Jesus is understandable. But it is Jesus' response that I find quite interesting. Now let me ask you, what do you do when you encounter someone whom you would have met before, but who does not now recognize you? What do you usually do in such situations? Is it not the case that you would seek to refresh that person's memory? To remind them who you are? Where you would have met them? To reintroduce yourself, as it were? When Jesus realized that Mary did not recognize him. All he had to do was reintroduce himself. Look, it's me, Jesus. I am your Lord for whom you are looking. Come, touch and see that I am alive. That would have done it. But Jesus did not do that. Instead, he called her name, Mary. And immediately something shifted. She knew that it was Jesus. Now I believe that Jesus called Mary by name because he wanted her to know that he recognized her. She may not have recognized him, but he recognized her. He knew her. It may have been dark, and Mary may have been deeply traumatized by what she had witnessed when she saw Jesus being crucified. Her grief and pain may have been unbearable. But when Jesus called her name, Mary, simultaneously, she had the joy of recognizing him and the comfort of knowing that he recognized her, that he knew her. See, when Jesus called her by her name, something shifted. Not only did she come to recognize him, but even more importantly, she recognized herself in him. She understood who he was. She understood how he saw her not just as one of his many followers, not just as part of a group that was grateful for his ministry to them and was therefore devoted to him. He understood that he saw her for herself. She was Mary. It was personal. He knew her. I have called you by your name. You are mine. My friends, God has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. The death and resurrection of Jesus bear witness to God's act of renewing and reconciling. 
Now that act is universal in its reach. It extends to all of creation. But that does not mean that God treats us just as a part of the grand scheme of things. It does not mean that God only sees us as just another member of the human species. You see, when it comes to our relationship with God, it is also personal, very personal. And because it is personal, it means that God sees each one of us. God sees you. God sees me. Each of us, God sees as a person and not just as a part of a collective. God sees you as a person, not just as part of his creation. With God, it is personal. What you go through in life is personal to God. God knows you with your dreams for a better life and your desire to be your best self. God knows you in your celebrations of life's joys and your appreciation of life's beauty and goodness. God knows you in your failures and frustrations, your disappointments and your weaknesses. God sees you, and God reaches out to you as God does to each one of us. And my friends, in those times when, like Mary, you find yourself in the dark places of life, alone with your doubts and fears, with your pain and sadness, confused and seeking answers, finding it hard to push past your experiences of hurt or even shame, God recognizes you. God knows you by name. It is in those times of darkness and pain that we most want and need to be recognized as a person in our own right. For it is in those times that we are most likely to be labeled by our circumstances and viewed according to our situations. We are most likely to be referred to by the things and the ways that people see us, referred to as, as sick or poor or unemployed or addict or divorced or abused or minority, etc. And it's often difficult for people to see past that, even those who are well-meaning. And it is sometimes difficult for us to see past that ourselves. For Jesus, that woman standing alone in the dark, sad, searching, afraid, confused, was not just another grieving woman. She had a name, and it mattered to him who she was. She was Mary. My friends, for Jesus, you are not just another human being dealing with life's ups and downs. 
life's joys and sorrows, life's hopes and fears. You are persons whom God knows and loves. It is personal, my friend, in all of life, whatever you are going through, God calls you because you matter to God. And nothing and no one can change that. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Christ, risen and alive, our friend, Savior, and Lord, like Mary, we celebrate your resurrection. As you were made known to her that first day of the week long ago, make yourself known to us today, we pray. We rejoice as you call us by name. We rejoice because death has lost its grip on you and you have freed us from death's grip also. But even as we rejoice, we pause, for we know that all is not right in the world. All is not as you desire. We see children who are left behind as they hunger and thirst for the basics of life. We see those of our elderly who are neglected, forgotten, alone. There are still those who are overcome by illness and loss, those who are victims of violence and injustice. We see the death-dealing acts and consequences of sin all around us. Your resurrection shows us that all those things can be changed. All such lives can be made new. You call us to be involved in that work of making new. Help us to be faithful in carrying it out so that every day would be a day of resurrection and renewal. Help us not to be afraid, not to be afraid to face the powers and the principalities that confront us, not afraid to work for justice, not afraid to say, this evil shall not stand, this wrong shall not prevail. Gracious God, open our eyes that we might recognize you in our world. Unplug our ears that we might hear both the cries of your people and the whispers of the Spirit. Strengthen our hands that we might reach out to others. Fortify us that we might have the courage to face the tasks. And God, empower us to truly follow you, our friend, our Savior, our Lord. Amen. The hymn, I Come With Joy, Voices United, 477. Christians far and near 
come to celebrate the resurrection of Christ to remember that he gave himself for us. We come at his invitation to share in this sacred meal. Let us share together in this holy sacrament. God most holy, we give you thanks for being with us and for uniting us with one another. As we share this sacred meal, we remember your love, whole and holy, a love that has held us from the beginning, a love that will hold us for as long as time exists. We need your wisdom, God. We need your guidance. We need your whispers and your shouts through the voices of all people, ministers, parents and grandparents, children and infants, strangers and neighbors, all who listen and speak your love. We need your invitation, your calling. You give to us Christ, alive in the world, a teacher, a healer, a challenger, a savior. He laughed with those who laughed and cried with those who cried. But most of all, he loved us with an unending love, a love that surpasses death, a love that brings new life, not only to us, but to all of creation. On the night before he was taken to his death, Jesus gathered his disciples. He shared with them a meal of remembrance and love. He blessed the bread and broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For each time you eat, remember me. He blessed the cup of wine and passed it to them, saying, Drink, this is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, my friends, we eat. And we drink in remembrance of Christ. I invite you 
in your own places to break the bread and to share the cup. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never For the bread and wine we have shared, and for the life that we have received, we thank you, God. Let us pray together. Gracious God, though we live in a world of great need, we have tasted of your goodness. Though faced with brokenness and illness, we have heard your call to be a people of healing love. Though daily we touch our limits, we receive your grace each day. Send us forth, O God, in faith, in hope, and in love. Amen. We shall go out with hope of resurrection. Voices United 586.
Good morning and happy Easter. I want to remind you to complete the financial outreach survey mailed to you recently. For online access, the link was in the e-blast of Good Friday. It's important to the board that we receive everyone's input on our opportunity to contribute financially to one or two of the many critical needs of the KW community. But let me be clear, we are talking about only the income from our financial investments, not the financial asset itself. The investment income on the money received from the sale of 74 Frederick generates about $150,000 annually. We need your input on a focused direction for that income. Please read the background information attached to the survey and submit your views online or by mail to Dorothy in the church office. Please do that this week. Thank you. Go from here with hope that overcomes your fears. Go with the promise of new life. Go with faith in God that anchors you when challenged by doubts. Go with the peace of the risen Christ and the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Go to continue God's holy work in the name of Jesus, who loves you and loves all of us. Amen. Mm -hmm.